Hi CC families, this is cycle 3, week 21 already, new memory work for the AB Sidarians. Let's start with our timeline for today. Our first event is World War II and President Franklin D. Roosevelt. So we did our W fingers, World War II, and President Franklin, this is an F, like a big OK sign, but it's a sign language F, Franklin D. Roosevelt, it's your R. Stalin, uh, remember our picture of Joseph Stalin, the leader of the USSR, and his big mustache. So that's our sign, right? Stalin of the USSR and the Katyn Massacre. We're going to take our hand and kind of stab or poke underneath. Um, and then hands down for um, just the, the great number of people that fell during the massacre. Um, so Stalin of the USSR and the Katyn Massacre. The United Nations formed. We're going to take our middle fingers and link together. We've used this sign for um, united in the past in the timeline. So the United Nations formed. Just link your fingers. The Cold War. We shiver. We're so cold. The Cold War. Um, Gandhi is just a sign language G. Gandhi and India's. This is the bindi dot on the forehead for India. India's independence. So cross your arms and then set free. Um, Jewish state established. So stroke your beard like the Jewish patriarchs would have had long beards. Jewish state established. You're going to make a sign language S and your hand up. And this is going to be um, an S down your arm, kind of like when we've done laws or um, contract, right, for the Magna Carta or the Constitution. This is S for state uh, established. So this is like the um, document, the laws that they would have used to constitute Israel as a nation. Um, Mao and communist victory in China. We're going to punch the air for a communist salute. This is what the way that they saluted. So communist, uh, Mao and communist victory in China. Take your hand across your um, shoulder to shoulder to your hip. That has been our sign for China throughout the whole timeline um, with the buttons on their uniform. So here we go. Let's put it to music. World War II and President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Stalin of the USSR and the Katyn Massacre, the United Nations formed the Cold War, Gandhi and India's independence, Jewish state established, Mao and communist victory in China. Awesome job. For math, we learned about the associative law, and we learned about our friends Andrew, uh, Bobby, and Connor that were grouped, right? They sat on the bench and the chair, and then one day they came, and someone switched the bench and the chair at their favorite time so that they sat in a different order, but they were still all together because they were best friends. And I'd be happy to email the story and the pictures to you if you'd like to use that at home as a tool for reviewing and learning about the associative law. Um, and we also used Lego math today. And so we kind of sang um, this way. Let's see, I'll start on this side. So open parentheses, A plus B, close parentheses, plus C equals A plus open parentheses, B plus C close parentheses. Can you see all my letters? So no matter how we group the numbers that we're adding, we'll always get the same sum when we add them together. We can add numbers in any order. And it's true of multiplication also. Um, we could turn this around and do the same thing, and we could sing, open parentheses, A times B, close parentheses, times C, 
equals a times open parentheses, b times c close parentheses. Okay, so have fun with um, Legos if you would like to practice that. Um, for history, this was a fun sentence, wasn't it? Um, this is about the U.S. astronauts, so tell me about U.S. astronauts. And we kind of did a moonwalk, um, acting like we were in space with no gravity or less gravity. Um, and so it goes, in 1969, in 1969, U.S. astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin were the first men to walk on the moon, moon, moon. And we did our, fan, our moon walk. Um, and so Aldrin, if you're wondering what this is, we're stirring our cauldron because <laughs> it sounds like Aldrin. Um, so those are our motions and our song. And so you can walk all around like an astronaut while you practice that and learn about the first men to actually walk on the moon. In Latin, we are on John 1 verse 6. We had a very short phrase today. Whose name was John? Cui nomen erat Johannes. That's it. Whose name was John? Uh, for science, we're on uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism. Can you say that? We were so excited to learn a word with nine syllables today. Wow. So we had our picture of a uniform to help us learn this word. So uniform, and then I tore it, uniformitarianism. Um, so this, this was a little, you can think about when you see someone in uniform, uniformitarianism. I'm saying that lots of times so that you can hear it and practice the word. But we also put that to the tune, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, like we used last week um, for science. And so the song goes like this. Uniformitarianism is the belief that the Earth's past. Geological changes can be fully explained by current processes. Um, so that's the belief that the only processes and events that have ever affected the earth um, and the, the land and the shape of the land on the earth is are things that are still happening today. There's never been anything other than that, anything out of the ordinary, like say a flood. Um, okay, so English is independent clause. We're learning sentence parts and the parts of the sentences we've learned so far are subject, predicate, Phrase, clause, now we're learning types of clauses. So obviously this is the Statue of Liberty clause. Do you see the hat? Not really, this is to um, help us learn about independent clauses because the Statue of Liberty reminds us that we are free and independent in our country with the Santa hat. So an independent clause, and we just chanted this today in class. So I said it and had the class repeat, an independent clause an independent clause expresses a complete thought, expresses a complete thought like a sentence. Like a sentence. And she can stand up all by herself if I can hold my hand steady. Right? So a complete thought like a sentence can stand alone, doesn't need anything else with it. That's our independent clause. And finally, for geography, we're learning about territories and terrains, which means that all the different kinds of land that we have in the United States. We have a big country, and when you go all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast, you encounter a lot of different terrains, and we'll learn what those are. So uh, we chanted this as well, so we'll say and repeat here as well. Territories and terrains, territories and terrains, eastern woodlands and plains, eastern woodlands and plains, plateaus and northwest coast, 
Plateau and Northwest Coast, California and Great Basin, California and Great Basin, Southwest, Southwest. So Eastern Woodlands is what it sounds like, woods, forests, um, in the north and in the south. There are two different colors, but it's all woodland. The plains are here in the middle of the country, dipping all the way down here into Texas. Plains are flat lands full of grass, um, without hills, without really trees, very flat and grassy. The plateau up here um, is like a raised plain, very flat, uh, but up. So it's almost like a mountain that got chopped off and it's very flat on top. That's plateau. The northwest coast is next, right on the edge of the ocean. It was, we had a little picture, remember it was very rocky um, terrain. Uh, big and rocky there by the coast. California and Great Basin is kind of like scrublands. So dry, almost like a desert, but with scrubs and bushes that could grow there. And the southwest down in here is, is desert. So there's not a lot of growth. Um, it'd be very dry and sandy and rocky and uh, maybe some cacti growing there. So those are all your territories and terrains. I should also say the Pacific, uh, the Northwest Coast kind of continues up here in Alaska, which is really up here in real life, um, up north. So we consider that still part of the, the Northwest Coast. Um, so take a look at a, a map at home, uh, maybe learn about those different kinds of terrains. It would be fun to learn about what kinds of creatures can live in each of those areas and what kind of plants grow there. Um, we practiced singing through the whole president song today. I think the trickiest part is at the very end, the way that we are singing the ending is um, to sing Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, one more to say. Donald Trump's our 45th president. It's for him we pray. Okay, so practice that ending. I think that's everything for new grammar. And next week, our presentations will be the letter W, as in World War, right? W. Um, older students will be prompted to retell a Bible story, not memorized verbatim, but to share a Bible story that you know. Um, a simple story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if the Abecedarians would like to share a Bible story, uh, maybe think about sharing a story where you could tell three things that happened in the story, um, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, you can feel free to bring a picture that goes with the story or something to help you remember um, and show that Bible story. Um, or bring something that starts with the letter W that you would like to share and give us clues for us to guess what your item is. Um, so that is for in two weeks. We're off this week. Uh, next Tuesday, and I'll see you in two weeks for week 22. Have a blessed week.